Hi and welcome to Un Academy Studios. I am Bhavik Bansal, a first year MBBS student at AIMS New Delhi. I got AIR one in AIMS MBBS 2019 and AIR two in NEET UG 2019. Today we'll be discussing my approach to physics questions and one of my favorite questions and a couple of approaches to go through that question. We'll also be discussing some general approaches to physics questions. But before that, let me introduce you to the Un Academy Plus platform. It's a personalized learning experience in which you get to interact with the educator live through live classes and you can get your doubts cleared instantaneously and you can attempt various quizzes and mock tests to analyze your performance uh, i would try to take classes there but uh, already many much more experienced faculty are already taking classes so you can register through the android app or the website the medical one year subscription costs 25000 uh, you can use the code bhavik and get a 10% discount and you can get it for 22500 uh, whereas the 2 year subscription costs 40000 but again you can use the code bhavik and get a 10% discount to get it for 36000 now moving on to the topic now the first thing you have to understand that physics in aims and neat are completely different whereas in neat uh, a person who knows in a formulas can score decent marks but in aims conceptual knowledge is kept at its prime position and conceptual knowledge is a uh, a good component of conceptual knowledge is to realize where to start a question and where to start a question depends on your approach and multiple approaches to a same question can exist now let me discuss one of my favorite problems this is the sliding ladder problem now generally what's the problem is there's a velocity of one end v1 and the velocity of the second end v2 and we have to somehow find relation between v1 and v2 the general approach is that you have, you know that l is constant because that's the length of the ladder so you write x and y in terms of l and then differentiate it why do we differentiate it like the thing is one side of the equation when we differentiate is going to be zero because we know that l is constant thereby d by dt of l is zero so we can easily write the pythagoras equation and by differentiating it we get one side is equal to zero so we can easily equate the other two components on the two sides this is v1 whereas this is v2 so we e easily get the equation by this method another method is called the instantaneous center of rotation method uh, in rotational motion any type of rotational motion one can imagine for an instant that there is a center around which the body is freely rotating so to find that center you just you have to know the direction of velocities at two positions on the point so because we know that the point here moves downward and and here moves rightwards so we can calculate the instantaneous center of rotation and the because it is rotating at a constant omega around that instantaneous center of rotation we can equate the ratios of these lengths with these velocities this is the second method to do these kinds of questions the third method is of constraint relation like uh, there is a v1 here and a v2 here but we know that the stick does not expand or contract therefore the components of velocity along the stick should be equal and opposite therefore v1 into this angle the cos of this angle is the component of v1 along the stick whereas v2 into cos of this angle is component of v2 along this stick so v1 cos of this angle should be v2 cos of this angle there goes another relation between v1 and v2 these are some of the basic ways to approach a single problem by three ways again this reminds me of constraint constraint motion is a vital part of any physics problem and we have like more than five ways to solve it some of you may have uh, heard of like the point method uh, another this kind of method that you equate the components uh, along the rod and maybe you have listened about the uh, t v summation method along the tension along the tension you calculate the work done by tension and summate it to zero because obviously tension cannot do any work so constraint is another thing where you can apply multiple methods so multiple approaches to a problem is where physics gets started now talking about approaches uh, one thing you have to realize is most of the concepts are taught double times like 
every question of electric potential can be done by electric field whereas every question of electric field can be done by electric potential it just saves you the hassle of an integral or a differential same goes for force and work laws of motion is a chapter which can help you solve every question in work energy power but work energy power saves you that integral if for example you are to set that calculate the potential energy or whatever calculate the work done in by a spring by a rod by a whatever you can if you know the force involved you can just integrate it through the distance and find out the work but potential energy is the thing that can give you that work just based on the top and bottom positions and not on the root for conservative forces it just simplifies forces that's what work does and similarly potential simplifies electric field so both concepts are interrelated it just one simplifies the other now the first thing you should think before approaching a question is what are the variables that are known and what are the variables that you should know now there's a basic thing exists like we have the three equation of motion like in the very beginning for 11 students it is difficult to correlate which equation to use when but when you think about and maybe even in the start you can write which variables you know which variables you do not know and then think about an equation relating those that's the basic approach to almost any question in physics and obviously be general when you are studying do not apply do not start calculating by numbers assume variables a b c d e f and calculate an expression because that expression after generalizing will give you a sense of what is really happening because any dumb can dumb person can fill in those numbers and calculate that's not what we are here to do we are here to calculate general expressions so whenever you are doing a question try to generalize it try not to put numbers too early try to put down the numbers after you have gotten the best expression the last expression that you can get so that's about it for the strategies in physics uh, i think i can elaborate but that's the most i think su is suitable for now if you want more strategy related videos you can subscribe to the unacademy studio channel and like and share the video to your friends thank you